Let's worship together. grace of God was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel it is this grace and faith we proclaim and hold on to it is this God and Savior we worship let us praise and adore our living Lord. Our hymn 761, Evening and Morning.
grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty, Almighty God, God, your Son, your Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, is the way, the, way, the, the truth, truth, and the life. life. Give, us, Give grace us grace to love, to love one, one another, another, to follow, follow in the way of his commandments, his commandments to and share to his risen life, life with all the world. The world. For, For he, he lives, lives and, and reigns, reigns with you in the, in the Holy Spirit, Spirit one, one God, God, now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. The reading today is from 1 Peter, the second chapter. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. The Lord be with you. We had a wonderful trip this last week. Drove all the way to Cape Cod. I'm stopping along the way to see our kids. And then we came back home and I wanted some cereal. And I filled my bowl with cereal and I poured the milk in it and then I thought, I wonder if this milk is still good or not. <laughs> um, have you ever poured a glass of milk or poured it on your cereal? And without even thinking about it, took a big swig of it and found out it was bad. And it's, what's that? Always sniff first. <laughs> I sniffed the milk. I poured it in a little cup. I tasted it, and it was good, and so I poured it all over my cereal. <laughs> but I have taken a big swig of milk or I pour it on a whole bowl of cereal, milk that has gone bad. And it's really hard to stomach. It's hard to keep down. Our scriptures tonight say, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk. Long for the good milk. You know, actually the um, reading for this Sunday does not include verse 1, but I asked Surely, if she would re include that. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and slander. This is the uh, spoiled milk. These are things that do not digest well, that do not set well, that do not taste good. Um, sometimes I've eaten very greasy hamburger, and later I feel it in my stomach. 
These things actually, malice, guile, and sincerity, envy, slander, these things can make us physically sick as well as emotionally sick. And the flavors can remain in us. And I think that these are things, the malice, um, the guile, insincerity, envy, slander, these can be things that we are either on the giving end or the receiving end. If we're on the receiving end of these things, um, slander, those things can hurt. And we can feed on them and keep that going in our bodies. And so I think that, you know, this is set up as a contrast between the pure spiritual milk and these other things that are spoiled. And so to start at verse 2 is to skip the contrast. My brother's, one of the jokes that he would always tell is, what is the difference between a horse? (laughs) And the answer is, its back leg is both the same. But to set this up as as something of... um, Don't try to figure it out. (laughs) I think that's the point. And to set this up as a contrast and to leave out half of the piece, or like a paper I wrote for college, is comparing, it was very ambitious, comparing Jesus' self-perception in the Gospel of John and another Gospel. Probably Mark, because it was short. And, And I got, I was engaged. It was my last semester. It was just hard to get it done. So I wrote the first half of it, Jesus' perception in the first half, and there was no second half in my paper. I just had to turn it in. So I think that the contrast is, we need that contrast to know that, you know, what's the pure spiritual milk? What is, what is the alternative to that? And we've been reading in Wednesday evenings the book of 1 Peter. And these things of, of this insincerity, of the slander, of the... Um, envy of the things that are poisonous or the things that, that are destructive to us. To remember, we've been talking about the things that were perishable, like milk that is perishable. And these are things that are perishable. And, and the good thing about it is it doesn't last either. These things uh, of the malice and the slander don't last. And these things that we get caught up in with relationships that are hurtful, these are perishable things not only in the sense that they spoil like spoiled milk that make us sick, but they also are perishable and that they won't last forever. And the milk that comes from God is something that lasts forever. It makes us stronger. We grow from those things. We endure. And and they're things that um, take us into salvation. We grow into salvation. It's something that that, uh, leads us into life. We have two words that we use interchangeably. We talk about eternal life and we talk about everlasting life. Everlasting life um, is life that lasts forever. Eternal life, which sometimes we equate with that, actually is, comes from the word eteros in Greek, which is the age to come. And eternal life is life that is characteristic of the age to come. And so we live now with life that is characteristic in the age to come, in relationships, in uh, what we eat and what we get nourished by and what we live by. And that um, food that is eternal food is food that is characteristic of the age to come and it feeds us and carries us into that eternal life. We grow into this salvation if we have tasted that the Lord is good. For you in this past week, In what ways is the Lord good? We had the um, praise item tonight of your friend. We've been praying for her with the kidney and who's had infection and the tumor, which they can remove and save the kidney. That is a sign of the Lord who is good. In our travels this last week, we camped by the sea and at night and from our tent, we could hear the waves crashing And we walked by the sea and we could watch um, the birds flying and we watched seal swimming. And they were all celebrating. We said, what are those birds doing? They were just having just a big fiesta, a big frolicking there. But I think, you know, as part of that taste and see that the Lord is good. We got to have um, time with our daughter in her new home. 
It's a beautiful home, and we got to taste and see that the Lord has been good to our daughter and caring for her. We got to travel and see the changing seasons. It's interesting to start out um, in Massachusetts on Cape Cod, where spring hasn't arrived yet, and then drive south through how many states in one day? Seven or something like that? And to watch the changing of the earth as we drive, and to watch the bursting of life, and to watch the blossomings, and to taste and see that God is good, that the seasons of life come around, and, and these things that, um, I guess winter is one of those perishable things that doesn't last forever, <laughs> you know, and the springs comes, but the changing of the seasons is something that is welcoming for us, because in our seasons of life, we recognize that there is good to come in these seasons. We taste and see that the Lord is good. What are other ways this week that you have tasted that the Lord is good? We had a supper together with some of the people who have lost loved ones. And we had a fellowship together of good food. I ate so much that I couldn't hold any more. But together with the community who had shared the losses of loved ones, um, we weren't alone. We were accompanied. We had the hope of resurrection, the hope of good things to come. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The provisions. Coming back on our drive when we woke up on the tent grounds on a Sunday morning when everything's closed, our car flashed a light that said, you're tire is low. It's leaking. We filled it up with air, and then it came back on again, saying it was low. We filled it up, and we drove all the way back here. And it held until we got here. And I went to the tire place today, and they say, we can't fix it. It's got a nail on the side of it, and we can't patch, or the patch would just come off. But we drove all that way safely with the nail in there, and it held the air, and it told us most of the time that it was green, and if it ever went down to the, you know, the flashing part, we just pumped it up, and then it was happy again. <laughs> Taste and see that the Lord is good. We've prayed for people, and we have answers to prayer. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The Habitat fundraiser on Sunday. Uh, people were gathered for that and raised funds to help people have a new home. That's fabulous. So for those of you at home, Ruth is saying that uh, they saw a theater production, high school theater production that was well done and uh, filled them with laughter for the whole night. She laughed her head off. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mamma Mia is still on. So the delight of, of gifts and skills and watching young people with these gifts. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So we can choose to um, feed on the sour, spoiled milk of life. And we can face the indigestion that it does to our minds and our hearts and our stomachs and our bodies. But those are perishable things. And we are to feed on the things that are pure and that are as good, that are gifts from God. Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. That's not something that's done alone, but it's done in community. We share community, and how much better to live in community than to live in isolation? It wouldn't be much fun to go see a play where there's no actors. So we, we uh, live in community, and we love in community, and we are together built into a spiritual house, a dwelling place, a safe place, a refuge. One of my favorite verses in the Bible comes from Psalm 3. It says that God is a shield about us, that God is our glory, that God is the one who lifts our face. And sometimes we can be downcast, discouraged. And the one who lifts our face, sometimes we can be filled with shame, the one who cleanses us and lifts our face. 
Sometimes we are filled with news that is disappointing. We've been praying for um, Joyce's cousin Cheryl, and she's back on the transplant list. She couldn't keep that organ. She kept the organ. The liver's doing well. Oh, the kidneys have failed. It was a little noisy when we were talking the other day. So she is now in need of, of kidneys. So we'll keep her in prayer. So, we're, so it's, we, we, we thank God for the liver, and we um, want to lift her up with that. So we don't live alone. We are a community of faith. We walk together. The one who believes in him will not be put to shame. The one who drinks of the pure spiritual milk, drinks of the things that are of love, of joy, of peace, of good report, things that are honest, things that are true, things that are uh, worthy of praise. To drink on these things, to eat on these things, we will not be put to shame. We will not be disappointed with these things. To you then who believe, God is precious. God is more and more precious to me every day as I hear and see the things that are not holding up. As I see the struggles of the nations, as I hear the things that are disappointing and hard, as I read of violence, more and more, God is precious. And we hold to God. I'm reminded, and my grandmother and grandfather always had in their kitchen this picture up on a wall, and it's just this wild storm. And out of the water rises this rock with a cross on it, and there's a person holding on to that cross, and it's the solid ground in the midst of the storm. God is precious because God is a firm rock in the midst of storms. This passage has this just this wonderful um, chorus almost, it, you know, that it, it could be sung like a hallelujah chorus almost. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. Um, that's quite a chorus. And remember, 1 Peter is written to people who are identified as people in exile, people who have been scattered, people who have lost their nation, people who have lost all that is holy and good. Their temple has been destroyed, and yet they get to be a royal priesthood. Their nation has been destroyed, and yet they are a holy nation. They are scattered over the face of the earth, and yet they are God's own people. This passage says, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. And that um, brings to my mind working with Latinos in upstate New York and, and the struggles of um, people who are called illegal aliens. And when they came to our congregation, they'd walk through the door and they were illegal aliens, not anymore, not in our place. They walk in and they are children of God, claimed by God. They are a royal nation. They are a holy people. And that's extremely strong. I think if we've had an identity that we have been secure in, if we have been among the powerful, among the governing, among the privileged. It's hard to understand what it's like to be scattered and to not be a people. To be disconnected, disempowered. But Paul, Peter writes to these very people who he calls people in exile, scattered over the earth. And he again names them as a chosen race. They might think of themselves as cursed but they're chosen and chosen for blessing. Once you're not a people, but now you are God's people. Once we were people without hope, but we are people with hope. 
a hope that is unable to be destroyed or overcome, imperishable. Once you had not received mercy, but now you've received mercy. And these things happen so that we might proclaim the mighty acts of God, to praise God, to give thanks to God. Chosen people, may God's peace be with you. May you savor and enjoy the pure spiritual milk. Oh, Lord, our God, you are so good to us. I opened a box of gumdrops, and the box only had five gumdrops inside. I counted them. There weren't very many. Your blessings are more than we can ever count. They are without number. They are healthier than gumdrops. You are nourishing, you are good. Your love is just what we need. Perfect love casts out fear. Your mercy is new every morning. Your goodness abounds. Your grace goes before us and behind us, beneath us and about us. We thank you, O Lord, for you are so good. May we enjoy and hunger and quench our longing with your pure spiritual milk, with the good that comes from you. May we name your goodness every day as we go to bed, as we rise up, as we meet it and encounter it all throughout the day. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, as we come this day and lift those that we love and care about before you, we are aware that they are surrounded by your love and your mercy, by your goodness. When we came back from our trip, we realized that the cat food was just about gone. What you feed us never runs out. And we thank you, O oh Lord, and we lift up those that we love and care about this night, knowing that your care will never run out for them. For Andy, who's been diagnosed with dementia, for his family, for the changes that that brings, for the new languages that are hard to understand and communicate, for the difference in meanings, may your grace surround and hold them, may your love be sufficient for Andy and family. For Val's daughter, Gretchen, who has gone through such a difficult time, who's finally home from the hospital and begins treatment for her cancer, for her tumors. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would give her strength, that your healing touch would be released for her, that you would raise her up and that you would continue to give strength and renew, O oh Lord, her family. You are the good shepherd. Surely goodness and mercy pursue and follow after Gretchen. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up Paul and his family as he commends to you his Aunt Betty, her husband, Uncle Bob, who is not doing real well. We pray for him. Place him in your care for Patty and Tim, for the whole family, O oh Lord. May your resurrection power raise them up each day. Comfort them, give them hope and strength. Give them joy that Betty is with you. O oh Lord, thank you that you understand our grief, that you wept at the tomb of Lazarus. So we commend them to you, Lord, in your mercy. Oh, Lord, we thank you for Jeff, for Joyce's nephew, and we commend him to you as he 
begins his care in the outpatient treatment. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would give him strength and raise him up and renew him. That you would give him health and crown his efforts, O oh Lord, with success and with goodness. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, O oh Lord, for answers to prayer. Oh, we taste and we see that you are good. For Donna, O oh Lord, who has her one kidney, we thank you, O oh Lord, that there is good hope and good prognosis for some of the care for her. So we raise her up again to you with thanksgiving and joy and ask that you would continue to come through to be her God. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, for Kathy and for Sal, you have said that you are going to prepare a place for us. And as they here in this life and the temporary things, as they've seen what is perishable by fire, the fear that they've come through and the need that they need to have, Lord, for their own health and provisions, we commend them to you and ask that you would watch over them in these coming months as they um, wait for things to come together again. Provide for them. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, as we hear the water, we commend you to those that we name now silent or loud, asking for you to refresh, renew, heal, raise up. For Al and Angela. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, this night we rest content, for you are good. See Jesus, we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Spread peace and come for the supper. All are welcome. For those of you at home, peace of the Lord be with you from us. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ given for you. The same way he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, freely given. Do this in remembrance of me, body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And for all of you at home, the body and blood is for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation, to drink pure spiritual milk. Our hymn 796, How Firm a Foundation. Peace, serve the risen one. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.